one of those funny things. It's like it's nearly 40 degrees here. It's not even in summer here in Australia and I'm thinking about making a rocket stove that has a built-in kettle. Because that's just what you need, is a nice hot drink on a sweltering, disgusting day. Anyway. The hold-up has been... I would have had this done a long time ago, but I was waiting for this to come from China. It's just a little tap. Um, I'm hoping it'll do the job. We're going to find out anyway. I've been collecting these parts now for a while, just for this occasion. And we're finally here. The setup is going to be something like this. Nothing groundbreaking there. But this is going to be my water chamber. And it's going to be notched in and sort of somewhere about there. It's going to have a lid so you can fill it. And the tap will be on on either side. It's a nice bit of 3mm stainless steel plate. This will be my divider, it'll cap the back and front of the, the chamber, so on and so forth. Just a good rule of thumb, we're making it the dividing plate now that will separate the combustion chamber from the air intake and it's a nice idea, well it's kind of crucial, don't let the divider um, come into this section, you'll really be um, restricting your airflow at that point, you want to keep this area wide open. The only thing restricting your airflow in there should be your fuel, okay? I made that mistake with the very first rocket stove I made. I sort of had it half coming out, not sure, not knowing what nerf I was trying to achieve. Just, just seemed to seemed like a good idea at the time, <laughs> and it uh, really was quite a fizzle. It didn't work well at all. While we're going, we will make the back and front for this. It's going to be a little bit interesting. It's not exactly square. But that's okay. It'll work. From there to there is 100 mil. Okay, 100 mil by about 100 mil. It's really a good investment to have a set square. That's what this is. This is a set square. In case you were wondering. They are just so handy. Okay. That's enough. Very good. This is just a um, uh, a nipple fitting. You can buy like a threaded fitting that has like it's a small bit of pipe and it's threaded on, threaded on either end and that's this is also just a, a threaded coupling which i've shortened down and welded a, a washer onto the end so that's a, a nice way of getting around a, not having to buy uh, a lid and a, and a uh, yeah let's get a grinder
Oh, that doesn't happen very often. All right. Now I'm going to break a, a very, I'm going to do something very naughty. I don't have any fresh flapper discs here to deburr, so what's going to happen is this flapper disc has been used on mild steel, and I'm about to use it on stainless steel, and what that means is I'm going to contaminate this stainless steel with mild steel, and everywhere where I grind it will rust. Uh, I am, uh, but I'm going to be painting this pot belly black, so that's not that much of an issue. But if you were going to leave this a, if you if you were going to leave this a nice bright shiny stainless steel finish, then you want to use fresh cutting discs. You want to use fresh flapper discs or grinding discs for cleanup because you, you'll destroy the finish before you've even started. As soon as it gets wet, that'll be it. And you you can still wool and scrub it out, and that that sometimes can get rid of it, but most of the time it doesn't. It, it'll just forever will have surface rust. It won't destroy its integrity, but it will destroy its finish. And with stainless steel, yeah, that's kind of a big deal. But as I say, in my case, this is going to be pot belly black. So it doesn't really matter. Before I can put anything else together, I need to weld this divider in because once it's once the top half is installed, um, it's very hard to get a welder in there. Good. Let's go get that set up. Welder's all set up now. I found this little block of aluminum that was lying around, minding its own business. I'm going to do this a bit backwards. Normally I would put a spacer at the bottom and just sit this on top, but the spacer is, is well, anyway, that's upside down. If I can hold that where you can see it and not drop it. <laughs> anyway, it leaves me about a 35mm gap at the bottom. I will just confirm that. Make that a 30mm gap. Again, I'm not too worried about it. Normally you should put, put your, um, any sort of welding, particularly TIG welding, you should earth onto the actual uh, piece that you're welding. And as you can see, it's arced out through the table and scarred the top. Not a big deal, I am painting this, that's why I didn't bother. That in my earth clamp currently is a pony clamp holding some bare wire onto the bench, so it's a little bit. That grinding dust probably didn't help either. Anyway, well that's that done. These are the pot holders that I currently use on my. On this guy here. This is a rocket stove that I'm making currently to sell on eBay because. Yeah, why not? It has a pot. It has a, um, a keep warm tray on the front here. And yeah, it's all made out of three mil. It's painted. It's fairly heavy. Good solid stove. Anyway, because I'm going to be painting the stainless steel, I, I might as well just use these pot holders. It just makes sense. So if that's the case, I don't burn myself. It's not too hot. I'm going to weld this together.
Not that it matters now. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. Probably only half a mil out of square. That's really quite acceptable. That's better. Whenever you're welding an internal corner like this, uh, like a right angled corner, whatever, it requires takes about double the temperature as it would to do an outside corner. The reason being is because you're welding into a point and it's going to really easily, it's going to get the heat where it needs it very, very easily. So when it comes around here, that's going to take a lot more heat uh, because it's got, it's a, there's a lot more surface for the heat to sort of soak into, if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. That's the way I look at it. And for an outside, just a butt join, that's what that weld would be called, a butt join. Uh, it's sort of like somewhere in between. So just as a rule of thumb, whether it be MIG, stick or TIG, uh, just remember to turn it up a lot hotter for your internal corners. If, if, if it doesn't look right, if everything went great for the outside and then you get to this internal corner and it's looking like dog poo, or bird poo, or any kind of poo really, probably not hot enough. And for three mil, this is gonna, I'm gonna be running this at like 100 amps on this TIG anyway. It's a nice smooth weld. It hasn't got good colour because I'm running the gas a bit lean because I'm going to be painting it and I don't need a really nice bright colour, not when I'm going to be covering it all with paint. So if you're wondering why my welds are a bit dark and grey, I know that's a gas coverage issue and I'm doing it on purpose, okay? So just chill, chill. As I said at the start, it's going to be painted. Now, the next step will be to insert this. Because if I put this on, it's going to be hard to get that over top, isn't it? So let's leave that off for now. And this requires a little bit of notching at the bottom. I'm not going to notch it until I get these end caps on because as I might have mentioned before, I don't know if you can see that, it doesn't look too bad on camera, but it's quite out of square. This side is kicking out. So I've cut this reasonably square and I'm going to use a clamp to pull it all into where it should be and that'll give me my overall, my finished dimension. So, so to do this, I'm going to start with my squarest corner. That's, the, that's your best bet. And that would be this side. It's actually spot on 90 degrees. That's what you're after. This is not so spot on. Okay. Okay, those two, those three sides are, squ are reasonably square to each other. This one's a bit out, so I'll put it at the bottom. And I'm going to set that up on there. Now you should be able to see how far out of square that is. It's parallel. That's sitting where it should be on that side. So that's that's enough to annoy me. More than enough to annoy me. I'm going to tack these top corners, top and bottom corners, into position. Oh, dearie me! I oh, know that didn't. No, it did. You just, you just got poked in the eye with a bit of filler rod. Gosh. Whoop. Now because I'm going to be inserting a fair bit of force on these, I'm going to just do a few little stitches just try to keep it all, keep it where it needs to be.
while I'm going, we'll get this side set up as well. Goodness, this one's. That's probably the closest. I felt that move. It did move. I felt my work move under my... <coughs> anyway. Let's try that again. There is a slight dint to that, so now is the time to fix that with a hammer. That's got it. So let's put some clamps on this and get it where it needs to be. There you go, mate. You're still in the frame? Good. That looks really good. And that side is within tolerances. It's not perfect, but it's, it's close enough that the human eye will probably not notice it. Unless you're a robot. That looks better. And this side is like, yeah, really bad. The next step in thinking about it is I really should drill the holes for this for this tap and for the um, for the filler and the cap. So yeah, if, <laughs> I mean I could do it afterwards, except it'd be very hard to do this nut up once it's on the inside. If that makes sense, so. I sort of need to attach this now before I assemble that any further. I mean, I mean this I could do any time, but in drilling the holes now, I'm not going to have like steel and swarf and stuff whoop, floating around on the inside, occasionally contaminating my cup of tea or jamming up this tap, so best to do it now. Just a little consideration as far as um, where you place the tap. If you put it too close to the bottom, you're going to have you're going to struggle to do the nut up, and uh, you've got to leave sufficient room to allow these washers to actually work. If, so if I put it too close to the bottom, um, yeah, it just won't work. <laughs> How does that, does that make sense? Yeah, you, 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 as much as I want to keep this down low so I can use more water, um, I, 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 there'll be a limit to how far I can actually place the tap uh, down on the boiler, if you like. Uh, another thing with the lid is uh, make sure that the filler lid has a hole in it so you're not creating a pressure vessel. 
um, we're trying to boil water and not create a steam engine. Um, so just something to keep in mind. If you don't have a hole in your lid, one, you won't be able to tell whether or not the water's boiling until probably the thing is blown up because steam is incredibly powerful and destructive. So don't make a, an, uh, oh, don't make a pipe bomb, okay? Just some things to keep in mind. Yeah. 20 mil. Fourteen, go fifteen mil. Give myself a little bit of clearance. Lovely. If you're wondering, the um, the cutting the, the cutting fluid I was using before is in fact non-toxic, and which is good considering some will inevitably end up inside this and uh, you'll end up consuming it. So it's a good idea to use a non-toxic cutting fluid. As a comparison, that's what a well looks like when you have better gas coverage. It's nice and shiny, you've got good colour. Um, yeah, just in case you thought I couldn't do it, <laughs> right? What happens when you turn the gas up? I might just leave the lid on now to protect the thread, in case it accidentally arcs out through the table onto it or something, just a good idea. Now, before I go screwing this on, I'm going to do some cutting and notching and stuff to make sure it fits, um, it all fits on this so I don't accidentally damage my tap. Something to keep in mind, because the water is going to be sealing against these welds, you want these welds to be really watertight because if it leaks on the outside, it's not too big of a deal. If it leaks into the fire area, well, that is a big deal. You're going to be constantly putting your fire out, aren't you? So make sure these are all nice and watertight. Just inspect them. Um, you know, there's no pinholes or um, obviously uh, areas where you've missed. It's not. It's pretty easy to tell with stainless steel. Uh, if you were stick welding or something, this and you know, you make sure you clean all your spat, uh, slag off so you can actually see what's going on with the weld. Don't just throw it all together, otherwise you'll have a, a rocket stable that will be um, the opposite of self igniting. It'll be self putting out a uh, yeah. You know what I mean. I want that to be flush. I actually want water to circulate all the way around it. I could make it flush at the back, um, but you know, that'd be silly because the hottest part of the stove is this back section here because the fire usually comes up and licks this, this back. So that's, I really want water to be uh, having access to that back corner. Okay, focus. It's still a little bit warm. Okay. Give myself a little bit of 
clearance there. Three mil out, so it's a quick difference. Works better. Okay, you probably can't see it. You really don't need to, I'm the one that'll be holding the grinder. Um, but I've got marked out where I need to notch for this to fit over the top. Okay, let's do that. It's sitting up on the well just there on that corner. I'm going to need to um, just notch a little bit more out there. That's a bit better. Sort of made a mess of that, but anyway. Get all that grinding dust out of there, that'll make the tea grass taste good. That's much better. Still come down a tiny bit more though. Getting very close. What I might do actually is just grind off some of this work. Just taking that radius out. Providing it's still watertight, shouldn't be an issue. That's getting buried. So what's stopping that now? Now all that has to happen is I need to fully weld around the bottom, providing I get a good weld all the way around there and along the front, that should make that watertight. I also need to cut a bit to go on the back there. And we are getting very close. Before I do that, gosh, put the tap in. Oof, dear is me. That would have sucked. Man, go to all this. Forget to put the tap in. <laughs> I could always just weld that in, but oh, that's a bit dodgy. What am I saying? Anyway. Okay.
They feel like silicon washers to me, so they should be okay with the heat. Silicon's actually pretty good at resisting temperature. That's why you've got like silicon cupcake trays and stuff, you know. They can, they can, they can handle the heat. That feels good. It's compressed the washer. All good signs. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. The only thing will be now when I'm welding this all together, I'm going to have to be very uh, diligent with my heat, sort of controlling how much heat I put into it, because I don't want to destroy this before I, I even finish it. So I'm going to have to do little quick welds and then probably quench it in water. Um, it's going to be a little bit annoying, but I think I'll be able to handle it. Um, I might actually weld the bottom, the rest of it, with silicon bronze rods, like TIG braze it. It's, there's a lot less heat involved if I do that. And it's pretty strong and it's corrosion resistant. There you go. I meant you got it out. Now's a really good time to clean out the inside, too. It's about as clean as a public toilet, but. Nothing that fire won't cure. That looks cute. I like that. And that's a little bit I notched out at the top. I think I will cut that down to fit in there. Once that's done, this thing will be pretty much watertight. Once it's welded out, of course. Fit, and that's a good thing because if I drop that in there, it's going to be really hard to get it out. I'm glad you can join me again. Somewhere in between. Um, Welding this out, uh, my phone overheated, which is what I'm recording with now. It was really hot. <laughs> I think it was like 30, 38 degrees. I, just, I look, looked on the thermometer. Anyway, I gave the phone mouth to mouth and somehow managed to bring it back to life. But it was then time for me to uh, go to work. So today is another day and it's raining and it's cool. And that's a great thing because that means that the fire ban that was on when I was making this is now off. For you though, it's going to be like a smooth transition and it's going to seem like nothing happened at all. The magic of video editing. So anyway, it's welded out now. I filled it full of water and measured how much it holds or how much you can get out of it when you turn the tap because you can't get all of the water out because it's always going to be, you know, it'll only go down to that far. Believe it or not, uh, that holds a full litre and a half of water, of which there's a litre held in the top, and what's left at the bottom is about just under half, just under half a litre, which is really surprising. But I kind of don't ever want to run this rocket stove without some water in it. So it's it's not about insurance to be able to 
always, you know, you can't boil a thing dry. It'll always have something in it. I mean, you could boil it dry if you weren't paying attention, but anyway. <clears throat> that's all that's left to do is to put that on and to put some feet on it, and I'm going to paint it. And we are going to test it. So I'm going to stop yabbering. And I'm going to use my precision ground knot piece of aluminium to, to help me find square. I'm just going to take this over to the linisher and knock that um, just make that weld flat. So your pot doesn't rock. Okay, let's quickly check it square. That is beautiful. Now, I'm just going to eyeball this. Because if it looks close enough, then it probably is. some feet. Here's something I prepared earlier. Nothing flash. Um, just a bit of 3mm flat bar with the centre notched out and the ends cut on an angle. Again, I know I shouldn't be mixing mild steel with stainless steel. And if I wasn't painting it, I would never do that. But because this is going to be painted black with some heat resistant pot belly black paint, I am yeah, that's what I'm doing. Hold that with one finger, fill away with the other finger, and try to get a tack on this. Come on! You can do it! Yes! Silicon bronze is also really good for welding dissimilar metals. I mean, I mean, stainless steel and mild steel isn't at all dissimilar. Um, stainless steel, after all, is just mild steel with nickel and chromium and nickel, chromium, and uh, manganese. Manganese added. I always forget the last one. And depending on you know what percentages of those three, and there's a few other variations, but anyway, um, yep. Yeah. Because silicon bronze doesn't doesn't pull all that much. It's it's good. It doesn't crack. It's got a bit of give to it. Still with me? Good. This is a third hand. It, I know it looks like a small weight. Um, yeah. One and a quarter kilos. That's exactly what it is. It is a small weight, but it also... That was embarrassing. Alrighty, there we go. There you go. Hence the reason we call it a third hand. Now we're going 
going to flip it over and just see how it sits. That's not too bad, it's not rocking. Because now is the time to sort out any rocking situ situations, just while you've got everything tacked together. Okay, we can fix that. Let's see what that does. Hasn't done a thing. Got it. I think I mentioned this before, I'll mention it again. I left this filled with water overnight. It's still not rocking, that's good. So when I did that, I discovered that it was, there was a slight leak just here on where my thumb is and the same on the other side. Exactly the same spots. Uh, it was the slightest leak and it was not obvious when I first uh, did it. So. It's just something, if you're going to make this, fill it up with water and just let it sit overnight and come back and see if there's any water pooling on the table. And that's, that's how I found the leak. And I traced it back up and there was just the tiniest bit of staining um, where the leaks were. Just ran a weld straight over top of it again. I haven't even bothered to clean it up. Uh, and that's fixed it. We are ready to paint this, so let's give it a quick wipe down. Before I get too crazy, I'm going to type up the parts I don't want to get paint on. I know it's not masking tape. It's just what I have available. Now with the smallest amount, you don't have to get crazy with this stuff. That's uh, done. This is a lazy season. And that is water spilling on it from inside the rocket stove. Mm, this could mess things up. But anyway. Okay, if I sound a bit funny, uh, this is why. When you've finished using spray paint, I'm still talking through the mask, sorry, hold the can upside down, just like that. What that does is remove any excess paint that's inside the tube, and that's what dries, basically that's what stuffs up your cans. You might think you're wasting paint doing that, but you're not, you're actually preserving what paint's left inside your can, so, I mean, this is the stuff I use, good old rust oleum, really good paint, probably the, like, I love the finish, nice satin finish, 
it looks more gloss now, but when it dries, it'll be nice and satin. Um, good paint. Seems to be able to withstand all I've been able to throw at it anyway. I'm going to come back in 20 minutes or so, and it should be touched dry by then. I'll see you, see you in 20 minutes. Come on, there we go. Oh, it's pretty pretty. It's amazing what a lick of paint does to something. I think it's, um, well, it's raining outside. <laughs> uh, kindling's going to be a little bit fun to try to find, but I did manage to scrape up some uh, larger wood. Well, let's go and test this. Hey, let's wipe this thing. I've got my my little family here with me, so they're going to be interjecting with lots of lovely, lovely kitty noises. I've got just over 1.5 litres here. Goodness, well, that's how much it held. Hey. Oh, really? I'm going to start with some pine because, as I said, oh, baby. Distance. Yeah, we do need some sticks. We need some small sticks. But that's something I don't have many of in this. Oh no. Oh, look out. It's got some smaller ones hiding in there. Let's get this coal base established. Now, I should look at the time. It is five o'clock on the dot. So let's, let's start the timer now and see how long it takes to boil this water and see if the uh, tap is actually up to up to the heat. Goodness, that's a tough little stick. Get in there. Goodness, that's embarrassing. Maybe some pizza. Maybe some pizza. Goodness. Do you like pizza, do you? You do? Oh, good. I eat pizza all day night. Gosh, I wish I was you. I eat pizza at night when I'm sleeping. Okay, maybe some noodles. Are we going to cook some noodles? Yes, right. what is it? Beautiful. Oh, that's nice oh, cheating. Oh, well. Okay, we're just throwing some rice noodles in the top. I think they're boiled already, actually. I don't, don't know if they're cooked yet, but they're certainly going. They're going fine? I think they're going just fine, yes. So we're at 18 minutes, so just shy 20 minutes, um, and we have steam. Phew. 
a little bit. The tap is still not even really hot, like I can touch that, which is great. That means that I'm not going to be melting out the, the plastic. Uh, well, it's a, anyway. I think this, it's going to be able to handle that. Oh, wow. Thank you. Okay. Looks pretty good to me. Now, how hot is that lid? Warm enough. So it's one of those things that you don't realise it's the case until you um, use it. Is that once it gets on the boil, there, there is no way of actually getting it off the boil because <laughs> the fire's inside. I could pull the wood out and um, pull some of it out and, and put it aside somewhere safe to reduce the heat. But uh, just emptying a cup of water out and putting a cold cup of water in the top seems to have settled things down. Uh, but, but in saying that too, just letting it boil away, it wasn't sort of splashing or sputtering or burning me in any way, and it probably wouldn't have hurt it just to let it bubble away. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy with this. I, it's, it has worked. It's probably not as quick as just sticking a pot on top and boiling water there or a kettle, but you're doing two things at once, <laughs> whether you want to or not. So it's got its advantages and disadvantages. Well, I hope this has been helpful and useful. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this sort of stuff. Um, feel free to leave a comment or a like or a dislike. Um, I really don't mind. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.